Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 16th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. No podcast on Monday. Sorry, I think I misspoke here on Friday due to observance of Martin Luther King Day. But we did have an interesting diary over the weekend. One file, two payloads by Xavier. Now, one of the interesting features of this malware was how it actually creates the string PowerShell. Of course, a lot of malware uses PowerShell. So there are a lot of signatures looking for the PowerShell string in particular, if it's encoded in various ways. Well, uh, this particular malware didn't really encode the PowerShell string. Instead, it dynamically assembled it. And one interesting kind of a little bit overly complicated, I think, thing it did is it looked for services that contain the string Microsoft. And then it pulled the S out of Microsoft to assemble the string PowerShell. Basically, the S in shell came from the service name that it pulled out of the service list. Interesting idea. Doubt it's actually really necessary to be that complicated, but well, it worked for that malware, apparently. It also then later had sort of an interesting second stage download that did, depending on the offset you looked at for the particular file, contain different parts of the second and then I guess sort of third stage of the malware. At offset zero, there was the executable payload. And then later, about uh, 280 kilobytes in, there was the second stage PowerShell script. This again is uh, often done sort of for obfuscation. Quite frequently, you have sort of at the beginning then actually some sort of harmless file like an image or something like this. And then at the end, appended the actual malicious payload. And last week, I mentioned two vulnerabilities in Ivanti's insecure a firewall. A Walexi had a great write-up about this and uh, showed how this vulnerability or this set of vulnerabilities was used to actually actively compromise systems. Still, we don't have an update from Ivanti, but, well, uh, Ivanti sort of released an updated configuration. What makes this all even more kind of frustrating is that Ivanti is hiding a lot of the deficiencies of its product behind obfuscation. So for example, the actual virtual machine, if you use the virtual machine product, comes encrypted and uh, well, then you first have to essentially kind of use the exploit to obtain the encryption key to actually see what the product does. Also, the updated configuration is encrypted. Thanks to Watchtower for providing a little bit more transparency here. And they came up with an interesting method to figure out if you have applied the workaround XML uh, to your Ivanti configuration. If you are accessing the REST API, in particular the uh, bookmark uh, feature that apparently was updated here, without the updated XML configuration applied, you will receive an empty page. If you did apply the update, then you will receive a complete HTML page as payload. So this can help you at least figure out if you correctly applied the patch to this vulnerability. Watchtower is not sharing all the details in part to protect people who may not have been able to apply the updated configuration yet. But uh, of course, be aware that others will probably work on that same problem and may have come to similar conclusions as Match Watchtower. So uh, be very aware that more attacks against Ivanti's products will likely be coming. And NVIDIA fixed vulnerabilities in the firmware for its highly popular H100 and A100 graphics cards. These are the cards that are usually not used by gamers, but for artificial intelligence and machine learning. The vulnerabilities affect the baseboard management controller. Yes, these cards have a BMC just like any server. The patch for the firmware does address a buffer overflow vulnerability that could be exploited to execute arbitrary code. 
And for those running a GitLab, there is a critical update available for all currently supported versions of GitLab. One of the vulnerabilities being addressed here has a perfect CVSS score of 10. CVE number is 2023-7028. This vulnerability sounds embarrassing. I have to look at the exact sort of implementation flaw here, but the issue is that password reset emails may be sent to arbitrary email addresses, so not just to the address registered with the particular user's account. With that, of course, you can just uh, reset any user's password and take over any account. Well, this is it again for today. Thank you for recommending this podcast to your friends. I saw a couple of nice posts on LinkedIn. Thanks for that. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.